Hello guys, and welcome back to another CAFCAST! Today we are taking a look at Sid Meier's Civilization VI. This is a preview version of the game, but all I've been told is that it is the complete full experience. We just don't have the leaders, or some of the leaders in yet, so that the choices that we have are a little bit limited. Um, and multiplayer isn't in this version of the game yet, which is why we're playing it just on our own. Um, but I had a chat with you guys on some of my live streams that I've been doing, and a lot of you said that you really like to see us play Civ. Um, and my channel actually, if you go back to the very first video on this channel, it was uh, Civilization 5, I'm pretty sure, when that first came out, and then we did some of Civilization 4 as well. Um, so I'd like to think that I'm reasonably good at the game. I've played a couple of episodes on the Civilization channel over on the Yogscast and really enjoyed myself. Uh, but what we're going to do here today is it's it's not going to be like a super technical game. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep all the, the tutorials and tips on so that anybody who's starting with Civilization VI who has no idea about the previous games gets a good chance to understand what's going on. I'll do my best to explain some bits and pieces as we go, but I'm going to ramp it quite quickly. So hopefully by episode 2 or 3 I won't need to explain too much and the people who are very good at this game, in fact who are a lot better than me at this game, will already be able to just watch as normal and will just kind of go for it. So that's the plan. Um, I don't claim to be the best Civ player in the world, but we're just going to give it a go and see what happens. So, uh, let's go ahead and create a game here. Um, we're going to go ahead and choose um, a specific uh, person here. Now, we have obviously got a few. You can see that there isn't a great deal of heroes, uh, or he leaders rather than heroes, sorry, um, because they haven't been added to this version of the game. But we do have things like, for example, we can use uh, Legion and Bath if we decide to be the Romans. They get a... Uh, they got a trading post straight away immediately, which is quite good um, to increase sort of like gold and science and tourism, business pieces like that. I'm, actually, I'm not sure about tourism. Just thought it said tourism on there, but it doesn't. So no, there's a, there's sort of, there are some different mechanics in this game that we'll kind of go through slowly but surely. Um, you've got Scythia here, uh, the P51 Mustang with Teddy Roosevelt. I like it. I like it. That sounds pretty cool. Um, but I haven't actually had a chance. I've already been uh, Hojo Tokimune on the live stream that I did with Hannah. Um, so either the Germans, but they're, again, C units. So no, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go ahead and just, just be the glorious Romans. We can try to take advantage of the trade routes early on in the game. Let's go with Prince. Uh, we'll go for a quick game on Prince mode, which is just normal difficulty, um, on continents, which is a few large land masses, so we don't start off all being on the same map, which I guess would be kind of good, and a little tiny map. So this is just going to give you guys a real good chance to get a feel for the game, um, and it comes out very, very shortly. In fact, by the time this playthrough that you're watching now has ended, the game will have been released. It's about a week uh, to go from time of recording, so, uh, so yeah, there's a good chance for you guys to sit down relax and just enjoy a chance to check out the preview of Civilization VI before it goes live next week. Let's get started, shall From we? From the first stirrings of life beneath water, Sean to Bean. the great beasts of the Stone Age, the man himself, to man taking his first upright steps, <laughs> you have come far. I have. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization, on towards the stars. Wow, he's pretty intense. Cast your net wide, this oh is Trajan. This is Trajan. Emperor of mighty Rome. Mighty Rome. Your legions <laughs> stand at the ready to march out and establish the largest empire the world has ever seen. Oh, man. If you can truly get all roads to lead to Rome, yours will be an empire of great riches and luxuries. And I look forward to Surely it. Surely then our citizens will proclaim you as their best ruler, the Optimus Princeps. Brilliant. Uh, the, actually, I've just noticed that we also get an additional city, city, city center building as well as additional other stuff. Oh, this is good. This is a good chance for us to play. Oh, I'm, so, I'm really actually really excited about this. Okay, so I've already played, um, if you guys did get a chance to watch it, um, I already played the game that we did with Hannah on the live stream, which was great. Uh, and it gave me a chance to kind of learn some of the real basics of this game. Now, so, straight away, obviously, you're, you're going to see that we have this, um, this kind of style this graphical style that they're going with on this game some people aren't fans of it personally i really really love this i think it looks absolutely amazing um the place that we're in right now is actually a really good tile um building next to a mountain which means that we can take advantage of that mountain later on um we have stone we have horses i don't think too far away we have rice as well we're next to a river so we can work that as well we have an additional piece of rice there as well 
as far as I'm concerned, this is a very, very good place to start. So we're going to go ahead straight away and click Found City. Settle there. Now, as you can see, um, this is why I think the map, this, this is cool. It, the, the whole game is more like a map where you see you have uh, this kind of like... Basically, you have this fog of war, which is uh, traditionally in, in all the civilization games, you've always had a fog of war. And this time, it's it's uncharted map territory. Uh, and then, obviously, when your your units can see certain areas, they they will it, it shows in lovely color, like just like Rome and everything that we can see here. And if you explored somewhere previously but can't currently see what's going on there, it just adds map, which I think is actually how this game should have been in the first place. I think it's fantastic. Not to mention the fact that you can see mountains off in the distance and not see perhaps what's in the valleys. Um, I, just, I think it's really beautiful. And there's, there's, a kind of, there's a bit more sort of stuff in this version of the game which makes it a little bit easier to see what you need to do, see what's going on. Uh, but we'll explain in more detail as we go. I'm just going to kind of play as normal and as things come up I'll try to explain them for you guys as well. So to start off with, we do get uh, begin this game with a warrior. Now, the idea, what you need to do with your starting unit is kind of wander around we and try to discover city things. State. There we go. So straight away, diplomatic relations with them will surely be beneficial for our empire. What is your accent? Perhaps what? we should send them an envoy. Is she supposed to be Scottish or like I don't know? That was really weird. Okay, well, thank you, advisor. Um, we've we found there a city state, guys. Straight away, boom. States. And each may provide she's helping us out. She's helping. She's explaining it all for me. <laughs> Our government, over time, will allow us to earn envoys That's to it. grow these relationships. So there are like industrious, uh, military, etc., etc. There's various different kind of uh, city-state opportunities, and you'll you'll kind of see as Our it goes. Our city-state neighbors have made a request of us. And if they're giving us missions them, to do as well. I so there we go. That, that kind of explains that. So basically, this is uh, the settler of Kabul who's kind of very, very close, actually, scarily close. We want to try and push him off a little bit if we can. Um, so city-states, there are, there, are, there are two different types of, uh, of AI um, in this game, or three types of technology. One, the barbarians, who are just a massive pain in the ass, and you have to just like kill them all the time um, and try to take care of their little encampments that they have. Two, you have main leaders, like myself, Rome, and anybody else that is in part of this game. I think this is a four player game I think I'm not sure though uh, we'll have to see as it goes and three you also have city states which are um, sort of individual cities that can't ex uh, make new cities they can't uh, expand their, their borders past what their, their single city can do but they can give us benefits different to the way that uh, leaders can give us different benefits um, as we play the game so again once we see one we will talk you through all of that so um, the city state quest and stuff we can talk about in a little while the first thing we need to decide what we're going to do with Rome here is what we're going to build so we've already got uh, city center, which obviously is the, the the main district here, which is perfect. More districts, as we unlock them, will become available in this area. But for now, there is none uh, available for us to build. We can't build any additional districts. And again, we'll explain about that in more detail later on. For now, um, what we need to do is choose basically one of these units down here. And as you can see, we actually get a recommendation if you have only just started playing this game. So we're going to go with the Scout. Scouts are really good because they have a good amount of visible uh, visibility. They can move quicker than, than regular units. They can run away if they need to as well. Bits and pieces like that. So that's the first unit we're going to build. And the first tech that we're going to research, you can, if you want to, open up the technology tree to get some more information about how this game works. Um, and this is where you'll find kind of different play styles, different things that people like to do. Personally, I quite like to go into uh, religions um, and work on trying to, to build my, my religion. So I'm actually going to go straight into astrology here to try to rush the founding of a religion um, to get faith and there are certain benefits that you can get with that later on. So again, we'll explain that. But there's loads of numbers on the screen. I know it might be a bit confusing for you guys. Just bear with me. It, it will make sense as, as we go. Um, you get a certain amount of each thing per turn and each thing does a certain thing if that makes sense hopefully it does and if you're confused and if you don't know what's happened in your in your turn there's always the the history here as you can see it tells you what's happened so recently so we've got a bonus for meeting a city state um the kabul city state which i don't actually spot anywhere so i think maybe they're going to be on like the 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 corner of one of these here they'll be around here somewhere or is it actually this settler it's actually that settler who hasn't actually landed yet um we've also got the city state quest they want us to construct a holy site, which we're already going to be doing anyway. That's what I plan to do in the first place. And then the fact that we met them as well. That's it. Done. Next turn. It's a turn-based game. So we do things turn by turn, which hopefully makes sense. 
So there we go, Kabul has uh, landed here. Now this is the uh, overview screen that you have for city states, as you can see here. Um, this is a militaristic um, city state, which basically means that, as you can see, well you can see exactly what it means. Um, if we have uh, an envoy with them, which we do, we have one envoy, it gives us plus two production in our capital whilst we're producing units specifically. If we get three envoys there, which is, again, you'll see how that works a little bit later on, uh, you can get plus two production in every encampment district from producing units. And then the sixth, uh, the, the one that you get for six, is an additional plus two production when producing units. And then you can see envoys and more than any other civilization. Kabul unique bonus, your units receive double experience from battles they initiate, which is amazing. So Kabul is a very good town to, uh, to get to know. So that's some information there. And then there's the City States menu here, which gives you a nice overview. Um, and again, you can get to that by pressing this button just here. Nice and straightforward. Okay. So somebody needs orders, which is this chap here. Now, when you first start off the game, really what you're trying to do with your units is just look at the immediate landscape around you and try to find out if you can find anything that you can perhaps take advantage of. So you're constantly looking, okay, so what is my next move? Here? What can I do have with my spotted another dudes, friendly et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. village. I suggest we send a scout to investigate. There we go. So um, I could tell you, click on the tell me more thing about this to show you guys the Civipedia, which is always in this game. You can find out things, uh, you know, if you need to. Um, as you can see, basically what this is, this is one of the bonuses for moving out and, and discovering things early on. Um, if you can go into these trouble villages, they will give you gifts, and they only do it once, so you want to find as many as you can before the your the other like players manage to find them instead. In that they can gain experience by exploring and discovering parts of the world. Okay, perfect. Um, as I said before, I'm not like the best player of Civ in the world, so if I'm missing anything, I'm sure there will be guys in the comments that are helping kind of like contribute to the conversation, so feel free to check out the comments as well. Um, but here we go. So she's talking about the scout because the scout has just been built. Um, but what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use this warrior to, uh, to get this here. And what that, that gift we got from, uh, from that village is, is a hidden technical secret, which means that we've got half of the production already completed for the wheel. So when we come to decide to learn how the wheel works, we've already got that. That's already ready to go, which is fantastic. And another city-state as well. So here we go. Um, they have an envoy. Uh, we have an envoy in there, which is good. Plus two culture in the capital. As I said before, the more you meet, the better it goes. This is actually really good as well. Um, hopefully this this isn't too annoying kind of like having these things explained i really hope that i'm helping somebody out there learn a bit more about civ um, but essentially the really cool thing about the envoy system which is new for civilization 6 is that the more of these guys you meet you get little bonuses little just little tiny little bonuses from every single one um whereas uh, before if you met a city state nothing really happened you just knew where they were until you started investing them and, and you had to do quests to invest in them and it was a very slow process but with this it's very very straightforward you you know you have a, a very simple system that shows you exactly what you can do um, and their unique bonus in case anybody wonders is when i enter a new era and one random inspiration from that era which is going to be very very useful so there we go that's those guys we've met them uh, and we should have this scout ready to go as well which he is so because we're sending the warrior up that way you can see a bit, bit more of a zoomed out map here um, we're going to instead go down this way to kind of expand out a little bit and see some more area. Plenty of bananas uh, down this way, which makes me think that perhaps it would make sense to go and perhaps build our second city down here somewhere. But we'll look at that once we actually get a settler built. So Rome is now ready to go once again. We are still doing astrology. Another nine turns to go on that. So we still can't build any new districts. So instead, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and build ourselves a slinger. Now, a slinger is a very basic ranged unit. They're very good for defending cities. It's always quite good to keep a ranged unit, at least one ranged unit, in every city that you have. So we'll get one of those built, uh, and we'll start speeding up the turns now as we go. Because I feel like we've kind of Enacting covered the basics of the game. Enacting new policies in our government can be of great benefit. I'll do our it. Our people await your decree. This is civics. This is what culture uh, gives you. As you, you see the 5.6 up there per turn, culture is a thing that we can improve um, through various different means and it gives us extra bits and pieces which you'll find out about now. It is not wisdom but authority Code of law. There you go. So that was the, the second thing as well. Now this is one of the really really cool changes of Civ 6. Um, instead of having civics as a thing that's kind of a bit tucked away 
that you can't really find out too much information about um, without having just sort of this understanding of how it works. In this game, the, the civic system actually has its own tech tree. Um, so you can change your policies, you can move your policies around and stuff like this. You can change your governments once you unlock a certain skill. Um, and you can find out about your government by just sort of clicking there and having a look. Um, but as you can see here, we, we basically it's all done on a card based system, which is amazing. It's so good. So what we can do here is we can say, right, okay, um, we know we want to get plus five unit combat strength in fighting barbarians. Because the main threat at the start of the game is barbarians, which you'll find out about and then we also want to make sure that we have plus one faith and plus one gold in the capital because as i already explained to you guys we're going for faith as quickly as we possibly can because we want to get a religion as quickly as possible so we'll confirm those policies uh you if you do want to focus on religion which you don't have to obviously you could have chosen the plus one production one instead uh, it's basically entirely up to you how you play this game so we found the new village which we'll go and check out in a second uh, and we're going to just sort of move slightly down a little bit further here. There's so much lovely, lovely land down here. This is very, very useful. Um, now, the, as I was saying before about the tech tree of civics, you can learn about different things as we go, different civics, different techs. The main thing that we want to focus on right now is getting mysticism done. Um, you can see actually what requirements each of these have to get a boost for them. So clear a barbarian outpost, build any district, Grow your civilization with at least six population. Found a pantheon. So there's various different boost things that we can get, which is really, really useful. Um, but to be honest with you, what we want to do straight away here is we want to go into doing mysticism. I, well, actually, no, because we don't have... So this is interesting. So you can learn various different ones of these if you want to, right? That's entirely up to you. You have, you have the option of choosing whichever one you want. But if we go ahead and take a look at the government page, you'll see that my current government doesn't actually allow me to use um, wildcard or diplomatic policies. Discipline, uh, the military policies are red, economic are yellow, diplomatic are green, and wildcard are purple. Um, if we want to be able to use the wildcard policies, which are the purple ones, um, we need to get a different thing, a different sort of option here. Um, and for us to be able to do that, we're going to have to get autocracy, which means we need to get political philosophy. So this is a basically there's a there's a step by step process in this game to teach you how to kind of expand slowly but surely. But that means that we think to ourselves, right, okay, so there's no point in trying to go for mysticism because we can't actually put that in right now. Um, but what we could do is we could go for foreign trade because that gives us um, the joint world possibility, or even the craftsmanship one, which gives us plus fifty percent towards ancient and classical era melee and range units and plus 30% production towards buildings or do you want to go gold for trade routes and production towards naval units and naval units is, wouldn't be great but what would be great is if we could do trade routes so that for us the Romans having that ability remember at the very start of the game we had that trade route ability if we choose that then we'll be able to start putting trade routes in and that is pretty much the best thing we can possibly do on this turn so there we go that's that turn done I really hope this is making sense. <laughs> Just as our citizens have faith in your leadership, so they are beginning to have faith in a higher power. I think it is wise to cultivate this new way of thinking. Perhaps there is some benefit to be gained. I think you're probably right. The faith thing begins. Our city continues to prosper. This is perfect. Look at this. Already our people thrive. We're growing already, guys. We're doing grows. well. I think I'll probably title this. You, you can already see the title, but I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, this will probably be titled as like a beginner's game. Um, but as I explained at the very start, it'll it'll pick up very, very quickly. So if you know, have a bit of information about Civ, a bit of knowledge about Civ, don't worry. It's not going to be super slow and super boring. We just want to make sure that everybody gets a good foundation of, of understanding in this game before we kind of move on. So uh, that's fine. You're good to go, my friends. So let's go ahead and move you past here through the bananas again now we've got a very interesting kind of layout here with lots of impassable mountains and stuff until units get a special upgrade which we can stop them by reinforcing here for example which means that people won't be able to get around and about which is great um so that's actually a really nice area that we're in right now obviously you know exactly what we're going to do here we're going to go straight into this village because villages equals gifts and we obviously need to get as many gifts as we possibly can so there we go. We have trained our first ranged unit. This lingers up. Capable of hitting enemies from afar, while out of the range of hand-to-hand -hand combat. So that's why they are great. Because they can hit things that are further away, whilst melee units aren't close enough to actually hit back. So it's like a one-sided uh, damage. So it's really, really useful. 
let's go ahead and do this. There we go. So we got the mysticism uh, thing has been boosted, which is great. Um, that's a civic thing, isn't it? That's the one that we were talking about before, which we needed to get at some point soon. So if I go back into this tech tree, you can see that mysticism has already got half of it already done for us, which is fantastic. There you go. So that's a really, really good start. Um, we also have the ability, obviously, to now move out into over here. Let's just go crazy. Let's go really far. Look at this. This is a really, really nice start. I like this area. It's, it's really interesting. Really cool, interesting uh, mountain situation over here. And then a couple of city-states up here means that it's going to be hard for any leaders to, to grow and, and come into this area. We've already got a, uh, a, a Kabul warrior here. Now, is he... What is he actually doing? What I can do is I can press this button. This, is, this down here is where we can choose what we want to do with each unit. We could do a ranged attack, but it looks like... Kabul can just wander through our, our, our city. Oh, because they're a city-state. I remember that he's not actually a, you know, a, 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 a leader trying to attack us right now. He's just going for a bit of a wander. So even I don't understand things sometimes. There you go. So he might be gifting us that unit because he is a military-type uh, city-state. Um, so that could be quite possible. So we'll, we'll have to wait and find out what happens there. Um, so now we'll go ahead and build a builder because you guys need to learn about how builders work. So that's the next thing that we will build. And we have one of each of the, of the other units. This guy's just going through a wander. He's not really doing anything. So that's fine. Um, now I could carry on going this way and expanding out really, really far. But to be honest with you, um, we don't want to go too far because we don't want to we, we miss anything that perhaps is, is closer to home. So we're going to sort of bring him round over the top of everything that he's got here. We've also got the slinger dude here who's going to be going up this way to have a good look around for us. That's good exposure. And then the scout here. We're mostly going to change and go around past these mountains over here just to find out what's down this way. Perfect. There we go. Political philosophy has been boosted because... We have the opportunity to develop a formal trade route between two cities. Oh, is it because of the... A trader the trade unit is required to establish such a route, which okay. would be very beneficial for our economy. A trader unit. So we need to get a trader unit, basically, which is something we'll look into in a second. So it's your contact with other states has crystallized your ideas on governing your own people, which means I think it's because we've got a third city-state that we've just found. And they have... You can see here... The guy is down here, this Lisbon warrior, has told us where Lisbon is. He said, hey, we're back over there, buddy. Let me mark it on your map for you. And he did. He marked it on his map. And now we know where it is, which is great. Every nation lives by exchanging. <laughs> okay. I was having a drink there because I thought I had more time to wait. But no, Sean Bean thought that it was fine just saying that. Great. Good job. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, have a look at our governments and policies and stuff. I think we're okay. Um, we want to keep on keeping the, the barbarian enhancement here, and the plus faith is is great as well. We'll trade the, the trade units one uh, at some point. We haven't got a trade unit set up right now, so there's no point in doing anything right now. We're going to keep it as it is. But it's it, see, it's interesting because before city states didn't actually wander out past their borders, and now they just send units just to go for a wander, which is great. It's really useful. So now we want to get um, the mysticism one done, I think. Because we're going to build a, a faith area, uh, which means that we can then build the oracle. Um, so we're going to sort of progress into that early on. We can't obviously use any of the, the bonuses that we have here that are built into the game right now. But what we can do is um, look, at, look at trying to progress that way sooner rather than later. So, but for now, that's fine. So mysticism it is. We've already got that boost in it anyway, so that's perfectly fine. This is another couple warrior here. Still haven't met any barbarians. Have barbarian oh, here we go. Right, these finally found these source. guys. We must these are barbarians. The stronghold or risk future attacks. There you go. So basically explains to us exactly what we have to do. For now, uh, he's just going to chill though because he's run out of turns. He can't do anything else. It is best oh no. When moving close oh to enemy dear. Units. There you get bushes. Doing so Telling us exactly what we did wrong there. <laughs> zone of control oh, restricting perfect. its movement i'll tell you what seeing as we've just met the barbarians i feel like this is quite a good time to end today's episode thank you very much for watching the first episode of sid Meier's civilization 6 the kind of new guide i guess uh, the new player guide or whatever whatever you want to call it i haven't 
got a clue. I don't know what it's called right now. Um, but I hope you're enjoying it. Make sure that you like the video if you enjoy the idea of this series and would like to see more. Um, once we've done this kind of beginner game, we will probably end up playing the full game and doing something a bit more in-depth, a bit more advanced, uh, maybe even with a couple of uh, Yogg's cast members. So if you have an idea of anybody that you would like to see get involved in a game on this channel, let me know in the comments. And next time, we'll start fighting the goddamn barbarians. Take care, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye. You've been watching the Gapcast. We hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out all of our other videos. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to us if you like what you see. That way I'll know to make more And that you really like me So You've been watching the Gafcast We hope you have enjoyed the show Don't forget to check out All of our other videos